In this lecture we're going to look at the chemical reactions of alcohols. By the end of this lecture you should be able to determine the products of the reaction of an alcohol with a mild oxidising agent, a dehydrating agent, a reactive metal, a carboxylic acid or an acid chloride. You should be able to explain why the use of concentrated sulfuric acid increases the ester yield and you should be able to state the advantage of acid chlorides over carboxylic acids for reacting with alcohols to make esters. We're now going to look at the reactions of alcohols and there's five different reactions we're going to look at. Firstly, we'll look at oxidation of alcohols, something we covered quite extensively in the higher. So, if you have a primary alcohol and oxidise it, you produce an aldehyde and if you oxidise that further, you get a carboxylic acid. If your alcohol is a secondary alcohol, then on oxidation, you produce a ketone, which cannot be further oxidised. And if your alcohol had been a tertiary alcohol, it can't be easily oxidised. Now, the reagent we use for carrying out these oxidations is usually, let's just write it here, it's usually acidified potassium dichromate. That's probably the most common oxidising agent that we use. Uh, Okay, so really that's just a reminder of stuff that you learnt in higher, you're still expected to remember that. Okay, next reaction is the dehydration to alkenes. Okay, and we came across this as a way of preparing alkenes. So, uh, this can be catalyzed by an acid. Now you did this in an experiment, you did the dehydration of cyclohexanol to cyclohexene. So you move the OH group from one carbon and an H from the other carbon and you produce your alkene. In this particular case there's only one alkene produced. When we dehydrate the butan 2 all, we can remove the hydroxyl group from one carbon and then a the hydrogen from an adjacent carbon. So it could be a hydrogen from this carbon or a hydrogen from this carbon. And depending what way around, you'll get a different alkene. Okay. So if it's that hydrogen, we produce butene. If it's that high, one of these hydrogens, we produce butene. In fact, we do produce both of these. Okay, so again, that's not new to you. We covered that in the alkene section. So alcohol can be dehydrated to alkenes. Again, something we briefly came across earlier on was the reaction of alcohols with reactive metals to form alkoxides. So your reactive metal, <coughs> potassium in this case, could be sodium or any other. Uh, alkali metal and in this case we're reacting it with methanol and we lose the hydrogen from the OH group and we produce what's called the alkoxide ion which is the CH3O- minus, and this be potassium methoxide plus hydrogen gas and the relevance of this reaction is the methoxide ion can then be used for the nucleophilic substitution of a haloalkane to make an ether. <clears throat> okay, the fourth reaction is one should be very common with the reaction of an alcohol with a carboxylic acid to make an ester. So for example, here's methanol, react it with ethanoic acid and we produce our ester methoethanoate plus water. 
so <coughs> we lose the OH from there and the H from there to make our ester. It is a reversible reaction and it tends to give you quite a low yield of ester. One way in which we can improve the yield of ester is by using concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst. Now, this reaction would be acid catalyzed anyway, but the, the improvement by using concentrated sulfuric acid is that concentrated sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent. Okay, so if you remember that, it's a dehydrating agent. So that means it removes the water that is produced in the esterification reaction. And going back to equilibrium, the Chatelier's principle, if you're removing one of the products, the equilibrium will shift to the right to replace it. So using concentrated sulfuric acid will improve the yield of ester, even over say using concentrated hydrochloric acid, because hydrochloric acid is not a dehydrating agent and so won't, won't uh, remove the H2O. So there's one way of making an ester, it does tend to have a low yield, that can be improved by using concentrated sulfuric acid. However, the best thing we can do or a better way of making an, acid, as, making an ester is to react to alcohol with an acid chloride and that's going to be the final reaction we're going to look at. So reaction of alcohol with an acid chloride. So what is an acid chloride? Okay, so here's a carboxylic acid, in this case ethanoic acid, and an acid chloride we remove that OH group and replace it with a Cl. Okay. So if you get C double bond O, Cl, that's an acid chloride. So if we use that instead of ethanoic acid for our condensation reaction to make an ester. Okay. In this case, again, we lose the H from the alcohol, but we lose the Cl from the acid chloride. So we produce our ester plus hydrochloric acid. But the important thing is it's not a equilibrium reaction. This reaction will go to completion. So you'll get far more, a far higher yield of ester by reacting your alcohol with an acid chloride than you will by reacting your alcohol with the carboxylic acid, even with the use of concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so there are the five reactions of alcohols you should know. Most of them are already known to you, but, but a couple of extra ones in there as well. So by now you should be able to determine the products of the reaction of an alcohol with a mild oxidising agent, a dehydrating agent, a reactive metal, a carboxylic acid or an acid chloride. You should be able to explain why the use of concentrated sulfuric acid increases the ester yield and state the advantage of acid chlorides over carboxylic acids for reacting with alcohols to make esters.